live. I'm just gonna hang around a bit until some people come on board and I'll start talking. Um, might tough up, top up my coffee. One moment. May as well put some tunes on in the background. Uh, I don't know. What do we feel like? So what I've got playing in the background is this record here, um, a record I picked up recently um, that I absolutely love. Um, this probably should have made it into my list, um, but I did try and pick 19 of my favorite pickups from the year. Um, this probably should have gotten, gotten there now I think about it. Um, really fantastic uh, dub record, um, so much interesting stuff going on with this, really weird. Um, the ar artist is called Imoja, and the album is called uh, Rockers from the Land of Reggae, I thought so. Um, yeah, that's what's playing. I might turn it down just a little bit. Again, on the uh, Pressure Sounds label, which has been my guiding light uh, in terms of reggae stuff uh, lately. So yeah, um, I thought I would do this quickly before I start work this morning. I've got about half an hour, so I'm going to be sort of quick. But I pulled out tw uh, 19 of my favorite new releases and reissues, and a stack of like 10 records that are old records that I picked up. You know, some were grails and some are long time bump listed, stuff like that. So um, I'll be relatively quick. The reason I thought I'd do a live stream is just because I am, um, it's tomorrow is Christmas Eve and I'm really busy with stuff and I thought instead of messing around editing and uploading, I'm just gonna do a live stream, get it all done and get it all up there. But um, yeah, it's been an awesome year for uh, music this year, 2019. I've picked up more new music in 2019 uh, than I have, you know, I would say in maybe four or five years. Um, I don't know if it's a lot more jazz or just a lot more stuff that's, you know, really interested me or the quality is higher or, I'm not sure, but I have and that's a good thing, so. I'm really happy, but what I'll do is first I will go through the 19 that I've picked out of my favorite. It's a mixture of reissues and a mixture of um, new releases, basically. Um, so in no particular order, um, this one has to be absolutely up there as one of the favorites of the year. Um, Black Monument Ensemble by Damon Locke. I guess in a way you could probably sort of use this video as a cheat guide. Instead of watching all my videos over the past year, you could just watch this one and it saves you a lot of time. You just get the best of, no messing around. Um, but yeah, this is definitely up there on International Anthem. Really fantastic. I'm gonna go through this quite quickly because there's quite a lot to get through. Okay. Uh, long awaited reissue of Nation Time by Joe McPhee. Finally picked this up. Um, this came out, I think, at the very beginning of this year. Um, absolutely fantastic record. Um, 
James Brown groove filtered through Archie Shep, a pivotal moment in the free jazz canon. So this is um, a very accessible free jazz record. Um, it's very funky, um, very, like, it's free jazz, but it's very accessible. It's got a really nice groove to it. It's got um, rhythm and some catchy moments and some really catchy riffs. Uh, amazing playing and just the vibe on here. This was recorded live and it just has a fantastic um, vibe that captures this, this really energetic sound to it. Um, this is the uh, 2019 Superior Viaduct reissue. And of course it helps that this cover is fantastic and Joe McPhee just looks super cool on here. So yeah, one of the favorite releases of reissues of the year, Joe McPhee Nation Time. This was one that was completely new to me and I haven't shown before in any videos this year. It was a recommendation um, from, one moment, hang on. Yeah, so this was recommended to me when I was in a record store. Um, the cover looks very festive, but it's not a festive record. This is called um, Coma Saxo, spelled K-O-M-A-S-A-X-O, um, which came out of We Jazz Records, which out of Finland. This came out this year, 2019. Um, this was sold to me as the guy's favorite jazz release of the year. Um, it, it's, it's a loose link to the UK jazz stuff, but there's so much more going on. Um, really fun and really creative with what they're doing. Um, massive, massive influence, hip hop influence on this sort of record and the drumming um, and the groove it has. Uh, yeah, it's just a really funky, cool release. Um, I was really surprised by how much I like this record here. Um, they've had some cool stuff on this label so far, and I think next year will be the year where they really take off. Because, um, yeah, everyone, this is sort of a, as far as I can tell, a super group of players from a bunch of groups on the label. Um, yeah. Peter Ida and Coma Saxo. And it's just called Coma Saxo. Oh, it's, it's Peter Ida. I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, presents. There we go. Yeah, really good. Um, this is something I showed early, back early in the year. Uh, I think this is back in March. Uh, Sandoz Lab Technicians Great Orders Distant Trails. Uh, a really fantastic ex experimental noise record with some amazing artwork. Um, this is from my friend Tim. This is his band, he put this out. Um, really cool, R really, really amazing stuff. Uh, filtered through a Western sound, uh, like a, kind of, a, a spaghetti Western sound, um, but just really experimental, um, loose, open, um, noisy stuff, but it really sort of takes off. And it, it, it sort of crosses this weird divide between noise and really crunchy guitars into a Sun Ra space at times. Uh, just, just yeah, just really wonderful stuff. Fantastic. Another reissue. Um, this is the Lost in Translation soundtrack. Um, I don't have to say too much about this, but this was one of my favorite um, movies as a teenager. And it's a really amazing soundtrack that really captures the, what I, you know, the feel of being in Japan, I guess. You, you got basically un, unreleased tracks by Kevin Shields and My Bloody Valentine, um, Square Pusher, Death in Vegas, Air, Jesus and Mary Chain. Um, you know, uh, it's just a, a really well put together soundtrack from, you know, the golden age for me, golden age being younger of uh, a sort of 90s soundtracks. Um, super well done. I was really happy this finally got reissued this year for Records Today. Um, unfortunately, the pressing is a little bit noisy um, and it's on this purpley wax. But, you know, that had been on my want list for a very, very long time. Uh, so happy to finally get a reissue of it. Um, we've got another new release. Uh, this is a release from New Zealand. This is Aldous Harding, designer. There she is on the back cover. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Um, I guess it's 
avant-pop or avant-garde. Well, it's not really avant-garde, it's just very interesting. Um, in the, I guess it's avant indie or something like that. Um, obviously a lazy reference is Kate Bush, but she's definitely very different from that. Um, it's very hard to describe what, what it's like. Um, really strange, really unusual arrangements. This one is a little bit more accessible than her previous record called Party. But um, yeah, absolutely wonderful. There's some really nice tracks on here. Um, the track Designer itself uh, and the barrel, Weight of the Planets uh, are really good. Definitely worth checking out. Um, it actually sounds a lot more summery and lighter than the previous one, even though it's a, a very dark looking cover. It came out in the middle of winter. Some of the tracks are very light and open and almost breezy in parts. But yeah, definitely one of my favorites of the year. An absolute winner. Okay. Um, this is a reissue or a first time issue of something that was found on a cassette. This is a uh, Ronald Langestrat Apollo. Uh, I think this is really, really wonderful. Um, the other one came out, Searching came out last year, but this one came out just at the beginning of this year. So it fits into the into the category, but uh, yeah, really wonderful. Check out the track uh, Lowdown, which is a both Boss Gax cover. That's really fantastic. Man, I've got zero people watching and zero people liked. I'm figuring you're all asleep in the US. It must be late evening time, I guess. Or everyone else has got busy family things to be doing on uh, <laughs> two days before Christmas. Anyway, I'm happy just to be talking to the camera and getting these shown and stuff anyway, so it doesn't really matter whether I'm talking to nobody or, um, you know, pre-filmed. So yeah, this is fantastic. Really, really worth checking out. Um, Murray McNabb, E-Music. I'm going to speed things up a bit now. Um, fantastic uh, compilation reissue. Well, first time issue of stuff. Oh, a bit windy outside still. Um, E-Music on my friend Jean Marco's label, Surround Bang Records. Um, super cool. This is really interesting. A ambient, electronic, experimental, piano stuff, world music. Uh, it's all in here. One of my favorites of the year for sure. Um, Mary McNabb E-Music, Surround Bang Records. Uh, another welcome reissue that came out on Record Store Day, A. Arcane. Nuclear Child, or oh, Nuclear Child. Um, unfortunately, this is a very cheaply done reissue, um, just to cash in on the Record Store Day thing. Um, some tracks cut out and start halfway through a track. Um, very minimal packaging, no inner sleeve. Oh, you know, it's done on some and like a colored vinyl thing, but it's done with absolute minimum effort, which is a shame. Uh, this did originally only came out on CD, so this is no doubt a CD master, but uh, it's one of my favorite ARK records, so I was really happy that this came out. Um, Nuclear Child. Check out the track, Honey Bee for Stella. Um, this is, they're moving sort of away from a shoegazy sound and more into a um, jazzy hip hop downbeat groove sort of thing. Very cool. Okay. Um, back to new releases. Maskovich Dance Band, uh, I talked about this quite recently. Super funky, super uh, disco-y, super groovy. Just a really nice, fun, light record. Um, yeah. Fantastic. On the Soundway Records label. Wonderful. Um, another new release here. Uh, Fire Orchestra Arrival. Um, this is a killer, killer record. Uh, they really back up on their game. The, amount, the stuff they're doing with the vocals and the production and the, the, um, the textures in here is, is really great. Um, yeah, really happy this came out this year and really happy to finally get a copy. Arrival by Fire Orchestra. I've talked about these guys many times before throughout the years on my channel. I always try and recommend them to people. I think they're really great. Okay, we'll go with this. The thing that no one's talking about apart from me and Jambu, uh, this is absolutely up there with one of my uh, favorite compilations of the year by far. Um, 
yeah, I talked about this quite a lot in depth in one of my earlier videos earlier in the year. Fantastic um, South American, uh, Latin, funky, uh, rhythmic, uh, just, just an absolute really fun record. Uh, great to crank um, in summertime. This is the Analog Africa label, who always do a great job. Fantastic packaging and booklet inside. Um, yeah, that's definitely a highlight of the year for me. Um, this is a recent uh, gift from a friend, but it's shot right up into my favorites of the year. Robert Ashley, Private Parts, uh, a really wonderful, um, sort of an ambient spoken word record. Uh, this is a reissue of, of on lovely music. Oh, damn, it came out in 2018. I thought it came out this year. Damn. Um, oh well, it's here now. Um, originally came out in 1977. Um, yeah, re really wonderful. Um, yeah, very evocative, almost like poetry. Not really poetry, it's definitely a spoken word thing. Where the more you listen to the lyrics or the, the words, the more rewarding it is. And even though it's really simple, you can definitely keep going back to this and hearing and understanding new things that come out of it. Really good. All right, I'll pull out the monster. Glass Speed Games, uh, this was, I've been on my want list for, for many, many years. Um, I never thought I'd be getting an original in any form. Uh, I sort of written that off, so I was really happy to get the Pure Pleasure reissue from this year, the audio file label. Um, obviously, it sounds incredible. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this actually sounds better than an original, um, because they do such a good job with the mastering. Um, but yeah, really, really happy to get this. Uh, amazing, amazing jazz record. Um, yeah, Glass Beat Games, Clifford Jordan. How am I for time? All right, getting quite quick. Um, the big, the big jazz reissue series of the year was the, um, the UK jazz stuff on Jazzman, the stuff around Ian Carr and Don Rendell. Um, this is Duskfire. What I might do is actually, since the record has just stopped, I might pause for a second and put this on in the background. I will put the track uh, Duskfire on. I'm gonna get copyright striked for sure on this live video, so I'm not even sure if you're gonna be able to view it, sadly. Hopefully it's all okay. It pisses me off to no end. Anytime I do anything with music, I'm always, I almost always get a strike, or the amount of times this year I've had to re-upload videos. There's one video I had to re-upload four times so I could get it so it wasn't blocked in all, on all the countries. Um, like I spent a whole morning deleting, re-editing, re-uploading, blah, blah, blah. And the thing is you never know until it's processed which what's going to get a strike or not. So the whole process per video to upload takes, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. And then you go do that four times. I don't know. Where was I going? I was just complaining about copyright strikes. It's a shame because, you know, I own, own the music now because I physically bought a copy, but I can't play it for you guys. You know, I've bought the record through the right channels and I paid for it, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, enough moaning. Duskfire, Ian Rendell, Don, Ian Rendell. Don Rendell, Ian Carr, they've done a really lovely job with a flip back sleeve here. Um, again, impossible to find. This is a really, really wonderful uh, jazz record. It doesn't really go too out there. Um, this track, Duskfire, written by Michael Garrick, is the, um, the one that really leans into a spiritual space. Um, they start to explore the spiritual side a little bit more on, um, is it called phase one? I can't remember, there's one more, um, or more, sorry, um, Eastern styles, I would say. Um, but yeah, this is pretty straight up, but it sounds absolutely incredible. Um, the track Dustfire is by far and away the highlight. It's one of the best UK jazz songs or tracks ever for me. Um, it's playing now, you probably can't really hear it too much. I don't want to have it too loud. Okay, now 
I'll save that for the end. Um, this one I've talked about in depth to the point where I did a whole video about it. Sarathi Korwa, More Arriving, uh, a wonderful um, jazz fusion record from this year. Highly political, highly relevant. Um, please go check that video out if you haven't seen it already. Uh, definitely up there for 2019 for me. Of course, the long-awaited reissue of Emperor Tomato Ketchup by Stereo Lab. Um, really happy to finally get this. Um, wasn't cheap, but I had to just uh, suck it up and get it. This is a wonderful 3LP box. Um, super thick. Yeah, really great. Um, the track Metronomic Underground is probably a very good example of Stereo Lab, even though they change their sound quite a lot. Um, it's one of the tracks that got me into Stereo Lab early on. Bang my face. Okay, last two. Um, my year wouldn't be complete without um, mentioning this again. Um, one of the highlights of my year in general was going over to Melbourne and seeing the Art Ensemble of Chicago play live. Um, you know, talk about once in a lifetime opportunity sort of thing. And then getting an email from Roscoe Mitchell himself saying he enjoyed my video review. Uh, has to be a, music, a highlight for me, you know, in terms of the world of music and records. So. You know, there's no surprise that this is up there with my favorite um, of the year. And it's really that good. I mean, it's easy to sort of think, you know, there's a lot of Art Ensemble Chicago records and how many more do you need and how different can they be? But this really takes them into a modern a modern time and the stuff they're doing here is super interesting. Um, yeah, def definitely worth a listen. The last one, I mean, th these aren't in any particular order, by the way, they're just a, a stack of things that I pulled out. There was quite a few more I could have shown, but um, I had to show this one here, just because this is my very good friend's uh, record label. Um, this is a single he put out by Cookie Brooklyn and the Crumbs. Um, I didn't do the artwork, but I helped set it up and get it printed. Um, so this is a, a local Wellington band here up the road. Um, the band's, yeah, called, I don't know if you can see that, because it's, oh, that's upside down, isn't it? Cookie Brooklyn and the Crumbs. Is a logic and pop. This is just a really nice um, indie rock pop catchy song. Um, but just because it's so personal and local to me, I had to show it. Very cool on the Epic Sweep record label. So that that's that's basically the best new releases and reissues of the year. Um, I'm going to go through and show you some more some new new stuff, mainly from the 70s and 80s. Um, yeah, some, some grails and stuff like that in there. But I mean, overall for me, I guess it has been a year of buying newer stuff and newer issues rather than focusing on um, older ones. It's just sort of happened that way. Um, I think I've had a very, very good year in buying. I say it every year, but I genuinely feel this year has been better than the past, you know, at least three or four years in, in records. I had a big discovery well, I, I decided to really go deep into reggae stuff, sort of around, I guess, August, sort of like that. And uh, I've sort of been really focusing on that the past sort of three or four months. Um, and that's been a big, exciting sort of deep dive for me and learning a lot of different things, which has been really great. Okay, anyway, more talking. Uh, I picked up this absolutely classic uh, King Tubby Presents dub from the roots. Um, this is like an early clock tower pressing, um, Jamaican pressing. Now the thing about this is, because it's a Jamaican pressing, it's sound, the bass is absolutely blown out, the balance is all off, the mix is really weird, um, but it sounds amazing. Like the, the, amount, the amount of power that comes on my speakers is incredible. Um, I think the pressing is like, dodgy or someone's fucked around with something on it when they've pressed this particular run, but it sounds quite different to this. If you listen to it on YouTube, I know it's not the same, but the mix like on this thing is just completely blown out and it, it sounds really great. Um, yeah, it just has a real power to it that I really love. So this particular pressing, I'm really happy with. Um, sorry, not the dub from the roots. It's the roots of dub. Forgive me for getting those confused. That, that was a really exciting one for me. Um, and, and these aren't all necessarily grails or based on value or based on rarity or based on how much I wanted them or whatever. These are just ones that I have really enjoyed 
um, played a lot uh, this year. Um, Magma's first record, I was really happy to get this for a really great price. I've um, been spending, this is a 2LP, I've uh, been spending this one a lot this year. Um, yeah, one that I've wanted for a long time. I'm gonna sneeze, maybe I'll hide behind the sleeve. <laughs> Can't edit that out on a live stream, can I? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Ma Magma, really happy. Kabaya, the album is called. That's the first one. Uh, this one was a big grail. I picked this up earlier in the year. Thank you to my friend Andrew in Auckland. Um, sorted me out with a copy of this. Dr. Tree, uh, really happy. Um, on the blue EMI label here. Uh, absolutely fantastic jazz funk record. Um, Killer breaks, killer grooves, um, really hard to find. Um, but yeah, that, that was definitely a big, big one for me. Took, been wanting that for, a, you know, quite a lot of years. This one wasn't a grail per se, but it was on my want list, but I played it a lot. Um, Pekka Pajola, Be the Magpie. Uh, a really wonderful, um, is it, I wanna say Swedish, no, it's Finnish. Finnish prog, prog jazz record. Um, yeah, really wonderful. Um, on our Love Records. Yeah, fantastic. This one is one that I specifically bought from um, Discogs as a birthday present to myself back in May. I talked about this quite a lot. Uh, Os Osnova Spianos, uh, this is an original pressing. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of proof damage on some of the vocal, well, the effects of the vocal part, so there's a little bit of distortion on some of the vocals. Um, but overall, I'm really happy to get a pressing of this in fantastic shape. Um, yeah, that, that was a big one. One of the best um, Brazilian, I guess it's almost an MPB record rather than full on Tropicalia. Yeah, really good. And everyone should have that record. And there's a really fantastic reissue of it out. I think Mr. Bongo did it. So, yeah. Another, um, this is probably definitely a holy grail for me this year. Um, Brian Brown, Quintet, Carlton Streets. Um, Australian jazz funk uh, monster record. Um, I don't have to say too much about this, but uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, su super hard to get these days, but uh, yeah, thank you again, Andrew. Um, there's no way I could get a copy of this uh, without your help. Hobbit's album cover. Um, huge thanks to uh, Anthony who switched me on to this. Willis Allen Ramsey. Um, really happy to finally find a copy of this locally. I didn't expect to find a copy in New Zealand, but there they was, popped up. Um, I felt like I wished this record into my hands. Um, I think this is really fantastic and um, it goes beyond being a nice and pleasant record, but I think it's just a really interesting, well well crafted um, record. I, I absolutely love it. Um, Muskrat Candlelight is, is really beautiful. Willis Allen Ramsey on, I think, is it? Um, Shelter Records, 1972. Um, got a couple of uh, reggae records here. Um, this is one I picked up recently. It's not particularly hard to find, but uh, it's an absolutely amazing amazing uh, reggae record, uh, Flesh of My Skin, Blood of My Blood, Keith Hudson. Um, the original, I would love to get a copy of that. Um, maybe one day I'll pull the trigger and get one. Um, but yeah, check out, even, just check out the whole record, man. This is a mind blow of a record. Um, and when I picked this up, it really, really inspired me to really go deep in some of the reggae stuff. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm at some sort of deep level now, but there's, a whole world that I feel like I'm swimming into of stuff that I'm really starting to understand and appreciate with reggae music. And uh, yeah, this has been a big signpost for me. Um, yeah, this is the ratio on a basic replay. Yes, finally got a copy of this. Uh, Best dressed chicken in town. This is a really immaculate um, original UK pressing on uh, green sleeves. There we go, uh, absolutely wonderful record. This is um, one that I recommend basically for anyone starting to get into reggae. Um, well, maybe, yeah, 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 I'd say so. Give it a go, uh, super catchy, super fun. Doesn't take itself too seriously. 
yeah, best dressed chicken in town. So, so far from this list, there's been no uh, straight out jazz records or, or Blue Note records even, but this one has to be up there as a favorite find. Uh, Lee Morgan Search for the New Land. It took me ages to find a copy of this, so I was really happy to get one for a very good price. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Uh, yeah, this was a, this was definitely a grail for me to find a copy of this. It's a very early uh, Liberty pressing. Um, yeah, so super happy. I mean, it's, it's just silly to pay, you know, eight times the amount for one from two years. I think it was ended up being three, two or three years earlier. Um, yeah, so super happy. This sounds absolutely amazing. That that was a big one for me. And the last one, another thank you again to Andrew, who ended up helping me out with a lot of grails this year. Uh, Killing Capitalism with Kindness. Uh, this is a wonderful box set, um, sort of chronicling the Expressway label out of Port Chalmers, New Zealand. Um, really happy to finally get a copy of this um, three disc set. Um, comes with a lovely booklet, um, features all the usual suspects from the record label. Um, see if it's in here. Here we go. Comes with this, yeah, really wonderful booklet here. Um, and this thing is in absolutely immaculate condition, like cra crazy good condition. I don't know where you got it from, Andrew, but uh, <laughs> I'm amazed that you have this, that you had this anyway, and you were happy to move it along. So thank you, thank you so much. Uh, there we go. So yeah, so some really good stuff this year. Um, it's I've never, you know, it's just to sit through now and make this video with you guys and look at them all and stuff. It's sort of, you know, when you're buying them here and there throughout the year, but when you see them all together like this, it's just, yeah, it was a really great year. Um, so it's some massive things I've been wanting. So yeah, um, I think I've got one more video to put out before the end of the year. No, it's, it's all, no, one more video to put out and that'll be it. I think I'm going away for 10 days uh over christmas so i'm not going to be making videos for a while so i'll be back in the new year um i picked out some books to read let me if i show you them quick i'm going to take her away with me i'm looking forward to reading uh kim gordon's girl in a band um virginia wolf short stories i haven't read anything by virginia wolf so i thought i would give that a go and 100 years of solitude um, which is a classic that i would be very excited to read so yeah um that's all um, thank you all for watching, even though nobody is watching or has been watching this live stream. Um, that doesn't matter. Maybe it's not working properly or maybe no one's around. Who knows? But yeah, thank you all for a great year. Thank you all who watch. Um, thank you all for leaving comments. I've had some really great comments. I should have done a compilation of my favorite. I generally, when I read through the comments, I'll pin my favorite comment for each video so it stays at the top. I should go through and do a compilation of my favorite comments of the year. Um, <laughs> just thinking back on some of them um yeah anyway um yeah and also of course thank you to everybody else that makes amazing videos and keeps up the vinyl community as it is um i think i'm you know there's only really i'm trying to think of people from the early days not not to sound like an old man but that keep making regular videos i mean roger makes them semi-regularly but on a weekly basis from the old days is myself derek uh, oh God, I'm having a name blank. Can't remember his name. This is a bad idea. I'm not going to go down a history lesson, history route thing. I'm going to end it. That's it. Thank you guys. See you later. Cheers.